Let's talk trash. You know, we had to be taught to renounce the powerful conservation ethic we had developed during the Great Depression and World War II. After the war, we needed to direct our enormous production capacity toward creation of products for peacetime. Life magazine helped in this effort by announcing the introduction of throwaways that would liberate the housewife from the drudgery of doing dishes. Mental note to the liberators, throwaway plastics take a lot of space and don't biodegrade. Only we humans make waste that nature can't digest. Plastics are also hard to recycle. A teacher told me how to express the under 5% of total plastics recovered in our waste stream. It's diddly point squat. That's the percentage we recycle. Now, melting point has a lot to do with this. Plastic is not purified by the remelting process like glass and metal. It begins to melt below the boiling point of water and does not drive off oily contaminants for which it is a sponge. Half of each year's 100 billion pounds of thermoplastic pellets will be made into fast track trash. A large unruly fraction of our trash will flow down rivers to the sea. Here is the accumulation at Biona Creek next to the LA airport, and here is the flotsam near California State University Long Beach and the desal plant we visited yesterday. In spite of deposit fees, much of this trash leading out to the sea will be plastic beverage bottles. We use two million of them in the United States every five minutes, here imaged by TED presenter Chris Jordan, who artfully documents mass consumption and zooms in for more detail. Here is a remote island repository for bottles off the coast of Baja, California. Isla San Roque is an uninhabited bird rookery off Baja's sparsely populated central coast. Notice that the bottles here have caps on them. Bottles made of polyethylene terephthalate, PET, will sink in seawater and not make it this far from civilization. Also, the caps are produced in separate factories from a different plastic, polypropylene. They will float in seawater, but unfortunately do not get recycled under the bottle bills. Let's trace the journey of the millions of caps that make it to sea solo. After a year, the ones from Japan are heading straight across the Pacific, while ours get caught in the California current and first head down to the latitude of Cabo San Lucas. After 10 years, a lot of the Japanese caps are in what we call the eastern garbage patch, while ours litter the Philippines. After 20 years, we see emerging the debris accumulation zone of the North Pacific Gyre. It so happens that millions of albatross nesting on Kure and Midway Atolls in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands National Monument forage here and scavenge whatever they can find for regurgitation to their chicks. A four-month-old Laysan albatross chick died with this in its stomach. Hundreds of thousands of the goose-sized chicks are dying with stomachs full of bottle caps and other rubbish, like cigarette lighters. But mostly bottle caps. Sadly, their parents mistake bottle caps for food tossing about in the ocean surface. 